I wanted to do a little video on superchargers and just kind of talk about uh, the two basic kinds that are on the market uh, most commonly and uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the kind that you see here. Uh, basically there's the centrifugal supercharger And then you have the positive displacement supercharger, like the one you see here, that basically sits on top of the engine. Uh, both the centrifugal supercharger or the positive displacement supercharger uh, will run off of a drive belt, as you see here. So as the belt turns the pulley, uh, you'll be turning shafts, which will be um, turning rotors to produce uh, more manifold pressure, known as boost. And uh, with more air pressure going into the engine, you can create more horsepower by adding more fuel. And so that's basically the idea behind a supercharger is uh, providing more air for the engine to burn. Um, what we have in front of us here is a positive displacement supercharger. And um, there are basically two different kinds of positive displacement superchargers. There's the root style and then there is the twin screw uh, like the one you see here. This is a 2004 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra and it came from the factory with a positive displacement supercharger but it came with uh, the root style. So you have either a root style supercharger or a twin screw and by looking at them you really can't tell the difference. I mean, they both have the same basic uh, design. Um, both the root style and the twin screw have two rotors inside. Okay, and so where they get their name, the uh, the root style comes from Francis Roots, who uh, developed a uh, an air pump for a blast furnace in the 1860s in Indiana. And the twin screw gets its name uh, because uh, there are two rotors and they are in a screw uh, shape design that will push the air forward towards the front of the supercharger. However, a lot of people think that just because this one's called a twin screw supercharger, they think that the roots style is uh, nothing like it, but in reality they're pretty close. Um, in fact, uh, Eaton just developed a new supercharger and their series is the TVS which means Twin Vortices series. So uh, once again it's also showing that uh, both positive displacement superchargers have uh, twin blades. Um, but that again is another misconception. Having two blades is where it gets the name from being a twin screw. Those uh, two rotors that go through there are not identical. Um, in fact, on uh, most of them you'll have a different uh, number of blades on one side than the other as the two mesh together. Basically, here's the difference in the two. A root style blower, the air will come in through the top here, through the elbow, just like this one, and as it meets to the back and it meets the two rotors, those two rotors are counter-rotating in this direction. Okay? So they're meshing together, the blades are meshing together, okay? and as they turn, they're pushing the air to the, to the inside of this casing of the supercharger. So the air is being pushed around until it goes down and uh, it's pushed forward to the front of the blower where it's finally let into the engine when you uh, mash on the throttle. Now, a twin screw supercharger um, also has two counter rotating rotors, but they're going uh, the opposite direction. As the air comes into the back of the supercharger and meets the two rotors, these rotors are turning this way. And as they turn this way, it's forcing the air down between the two blades in a screw shape and making its way to the front of the blower, where once again, when you mash on the throttle, it will uh, push that, uh, that pressure into the engine. Kenny Bell did a test 
one on one, basically the same size displacement supercharger, and found that uh, the Roots style supercharger produced twice the heat as their twin screw. Um, this is a Whipple supercharger, yet another brand, um, and it's pretty similar to the to the Kenny Bell uh, numbers. Their displacement display leaders are pretty much the same, and their output pretty much is the same. So, um, but basically, that was the advantage of a twin screw supercharger compared to uh, the root style that uh, initially was on this car. It kind of shows why Ford did an intercooling system for this car, uh, just to keep it. Uh, factory drivable under just about any uh, circumstance. And with an intercooling system, um, it even just makes this work a lot better. So then the question is, why would somebody want a positive displacement supercharger like this compared to a centrifugal blower? And uh, the real answer to that is it really depends on what you're going for. Both of them have their advantages and their disadvantages. And so with a positive displacement supercharger like this, your main advantage is to have that instantaneous torque, that instant horsepower, um, as soon as you put your foot down. A positive displacement supercharger is also known as a fixed displacement supercharger. And the reason for that is because, um, much like the engine's power band itself, a supercharger will pre be producing boost in a linear form. So at uh, 3,000 RPM engine speed, uh, this blower will be producing X amount of boost. At double that, at 6,000 RPM, it will be producing two times that amount. So 2X that same amount. So, uh, so that brings up the question, okay, well, how does that make sense? You basically what you're saying is I have 17 pounds of boost at 3,000 RPM and 17 pounds of boost at 6,000 RPM. Uh, how does that make sense if I've increased the engine speed by double? Well, the answer to that is that you're obviously the engine is now consuming um, that same increased amount of, uh, of air. So in this case, the supercharger is continuing to produce the same amount of boost okay, at uh, each engine speed under full throttle. Now the way to calculate the, uh, the speed of the actual supercharger, uh, there's a formula for that. And so what you do is, uh, if you look up here, this is the upper pulley, okay, and it's measured in, in a diameter, and in this case it's a 3 inch diameter pulley. Now at the bottom, okay, where this belt goes down onto the engine, at the bottom pulley, which is the crank pulley, okay, that also has its own measurement, and uh, it measures at 7.5, okay, so 7.5 inches. So what you do is you would divide 7.5 divided by 3 and you would get uh, a number which in this case is 2.5 so then you take that number 2.5 and you multiply it by the engine speed of the car or of the engine and that'll tell you how fast the supercharger is spinning so for example at 6000 rpm this blower is producing 15,000 revolutions per minute so you think about that, if uh, this is called a 2.3 liter Whipple supercharger, and so the 2.3 liters is an air displacement measurement that's given by each revolution of the supercharger. Okay, so every time this does a full revolution, it's um, producing 2.3 liters of air into the engine. So in this case, it's producing every minute, it's producing 15 2.3 liter pockets of air. Now on a centrifugal supercharger, okay, so um, it's a little more efficient overall as a design depending on how you're looking at it and kind of the same with a turbocharger. The disadvantage with a centrifugal supercharger is that you have to wait until the engine is spinning fast enough to spin that to supercharger unit fast enough to produce boost and where the boost is compounded differently on the centrifugal supercharger it, uh, it will be the square of its output at uh, 6000 rpm that it would be at 3000 rpm so basically what that means is if you're running for example 8 pounds of boost at 6000 rpm with a centrifugal supercharger 
at half of that engine speed, at 3000 RPM, you would be the square root of that boost. Okay, so um, basically at, uh, at 6000 RPM on a centrifugal blower, you'd be at uh, 8 PSI, and at 3000 RPM, you would only be at 2 PSI. Okay, where a positive displacement supercharger like this would be, it's linear. So you have 17 pounds of boost at 3000 RPM, and you have 17 pounds of boost at 6,000 RPM. So you have basically all the power on tap with this one, but it will not peak as high as uh, the centrifugal supercharger. So um, depending on what you want, if you want power directly on hand, and um, you know that's kind of the difference that you're getting with a positive displacement supercharger compared to a centrifugal that's waiting to build boost. Now let's talk about manifold pressure for a minute. Um, basically right now in the atmosphere at sea level there is 14.7 pounds of atmospheric pressure on everything that's how dense the air is there's 14.7 pounds per square inch being pushed upon everything um, at sea level and of course that number diminishes the higher up in altitude you go um, and so Right now, that's our baseline of zero. Anything that's 14.7 is, is kind of normal. So when you're adding pressure to the engine, okay, that's, it's actually what you're doing is measuring restriction. Okay, so where this supercharger will produce 17 pounds of boost, okay, that means there are 17 additional pounds of resistance or force that's being pushed inside of the engine. Okay, that's filling the void. Of, uh, of the air that would normally be in there under atmospheric pressure. A uh, common misconception is that a supercharger will force air into the engine completely. Okay, and although that's somewhat true, basically uh, why I say we're increasing the manifold pressure is because an engine is actually a pump. Okay, so as the piston goes down on the intake stroke, Okay, it's creating a negative pressure and a negative area for, uh, for the air to fill. Okay, so that's actually what's drawing that air into the engine. That negative space that's being provided as soon as the uh, intake valve is open and the exhaust valve is closed. Okay, so it's creating a suction and it's sucking in the air. Okay, now, so what a supercharger or a turbocharger in this case is doing is providing more pressure to be able to fill up that void. Something else I wanted to talk about is, as far as boost is concerned is, uh, you know, there's a few misconceptions with that as well. Uh, one is that the more boost that you have, the absolute more horsepower you're going to make. Okay, but uh, to put that uh, theory to rest, let's say you're sitting at a table with a friend and you have a bigger straw than he has. Okay, and so your friend is blowing through that straw as powerful as he can. He says, wow, you see that? You see how much boost I have? You see how much restriction I have? And then you pick up your bigger straw and you blow through it and you say, okay, well, obviously I have less resistance. I have less boost pressure, but I'm blowing more air. As you push more air into the engine, that's part of the equation, but the second part of the equation is getting the air out of the engine, okay, or the exhaust in this case, the burned air. So if you put a more free flowing exhaust system on this car, like a set of headers, okay, you would actually see a decrease in your boost level. Okay, so uh, it's normal to see a one pound or so drop off as the exhaust is now more free flowing. But let's say you had somebody come up to you and they have a four cylinder car and they say, I'm pushing 30 pounds of boost. 30 pounds of boost okay, has to be interpreted in a different way now though. Um, once again, boost is a restriction. So on a car that has a smaller intake manifold, okay, the same amount of air that I would be pushing with this engine, now in a smaller area that you're pushing, okay, now that would increase the boost level as there's less displacement for that air to go.